Product analytics enable you to gather and analyze data about how users interact with your React app. To show you how to set up analytics, in this tutorial, we will create a basic React app, add PostHog, and use it to capture page views and custom events. All right, so the very first thing we're going to be doing is creating a React application. And to demonstrate the basics of PostHog analytics, we'll create a simple app with two pages and a link that navigates between the two pages. But first, ensure that Node.js is installed on your machine. For this tutorial, we're going to be using version 18 or higher. And go ahead and type in MPX create React app of React Analytics. This is going to create a React project called React Analytics in your application folder. And when you press enter, this will install all the dependencies that are needed to be able to create a React application. All right, now that we have this application installed in our directory, let's go ahead and make sure that we jump inside the directory by saying CD React Analytics, because you don't want to do all of our installations outside of our project directory. And now inside our React Analytics, we need to jump into our source directory and we need to create two different files. Our first file is going to be our homepage.js. And then our second file is going to be aboutpage.js. And these are going to be the two components that we're jumping in between when we set up our application. And to make this super easy for our home page, let's go ahead and just paste in this function of home page, which just returns an H1 tag of home page. And we're going to do something extremely similar for our about page. And our about page, we're also just going to add a new function for about page, which returns an H1 tag of about page. All right, so the next thing we need to do is go back into our terminal and make sure you are inside our React analytics. And then we want to add npm install React router DOM. When you click enter, that'll install all the dependencies that we need. Since React is a SPA application, a single page application, we need to implement and install some kind of library that allows us to go to create routes and links and all that kind of stuff. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using React Router DOM. All right, after this, let's go ahead and jump into our app.js. All of this code that you see right now automatically comes when you create a new React project. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything inside our app.js. And I'm going to add some new logic. What we have here is we just say import React from React. We're importing browser router, route, link, and routes all from this library that we just installed of React Router DOM. And then we have our home page and about page added as well. We have our route that has links to our home page. And then we also have a link that routes to our about page, which are just simply React components. And then we set up all the connections right here. We set the paths to the component that we're going to be rendering on the page. All right. Now, after we do that, we can just go back into our terminal and we can just say npm start. This will start a React application for us. And it'll automatically go to Route 3000. And if we make this a little bit bigger, we can see that we have our home and we have our about. And we can navigate between the two components by clicking on home and by clicking on about. Now, the next thing we need to do is go back into our terminal and we need to install posthog.js by doing an npm install posthog.js. This will install literally all the dependencies that we need to be able to connect our React application to posthog. Now, the very next thing we need to do is just jump into our index.js. So what we need to add here is we need to go ahead and add in our imports posthog from posthog.js. And then we want to import our posthog provider from posthog.js slash react. Now, this posthog initialization is something that we need to add, where we need to add our API key and our address. If we go back into our web browser, we can see that if we jump into our home page and then we go to our settings, we see right here within our web snippet this posthog init. Now, make sure you just grab this entire thing right here. This will have your API key and your API host. Go ahead and add that right here. I'll make some spaces for readability. 
And then inside your root.render, inside your index.js, make sure you add a tag of post hog provider with your client that is equal to post hog. Now, again, we imported our post hog. We added this initialization function where we pass in our API key and our host, and then we add it as our client within our post hog provider. Now, once you do this, we can come back down here into our terminal and type in npm start. And now inside here, we can see that our React application is starting up again, and we can navigate between our home and about. Now, if we go back into our post hog and we go into activity, we can see in here that we added some new events. Starting right here, we can see that our page view, which is when a user loads or reloads a page, started. And then we have our text about that a user clicked and then home, rage click, and then up and out in a home. And rage click means someone just keeps on clicking the same thing. Now, one thing you might notice that moving between pages only captures a single page view event. So we can see our single page view event here. Now, this is because post hog only captures page view events when a page load is fired. Since React creates a single page app, this only happens once and the React router handles all changes afterwards. If we want to capture every route change, we must write code to capture page views that integrate with the router. So let's go back into our code and create a new file. Now this new file is going to be called posthogpageviewtracker.js. And now inside our posthog page view tracker, we want to go ahead and import our use effect from React import our use location, which is from our dependency of React Router DOM. And then we want to import use post hog from our post hog JS React. Inside here, we set up a new variable of post hog page view tracker, where we're using an arrow function of const location, which is going to be equal to our use location from React Router DOM. And then we're going to say const post hog use post hog. And then we have our use effect kicking off to capture each page view that changes within our React Router DOM. So what happens is each time React Router DOM is going to be using a new location, we're going to be tagging that as a page view event inside post hog. However, to use this now, we need to go into our app.js and we need to add this inside our routes. So right here at the very top, let's go ahead and just say import post hog page view tracker from our location of dot post hog page view tracker. And now right under our very first router, which is really our browser router, make sure that we add our post hog page view tracker. Now, if we go back to our application and we go into our React app, I'm just going to refresh it and we click between about page and home page. And then we go back into our activity and reload. We can see that a page view happens every single time we're clicking the links between about and home. So right here, just a few seconds ago, we can see all of these new page leaves and page views that are initializing due to post hog and our react router DOM. Now, one thing we also want to do is probably turn off our auto captured page views to ensure that we won't be double capturing page views on the first to load. So if we go back into our code, we can head over to our index.js and right here in our post hog initialization, we can go ahead and just say comma capture page view and we want this to be equal to false. Now beyond page views, there might be more events that you want to capture. And to do this, we can capture custom events with post hog. And to showcase this, we can update the code in our homepage.js to now equal something else. And really all we're doing here is adding a new button. So we can see function homepage, where we're now just adding a new button that has an on click listener. And when you click this button, we have a new home button clicked but then we're going to be registering the username as Max the Hedgehog. So now if we go back into our application and we refresh and we go to our homepage, we can see that there's now a click me button. So when we say click me, nothing is really happening unless you go back in here and we want to reload all of the events. Now, 
when you just look at it, we're seeing a bunch of events happening because we are just clicking those buttons. But if we scroll up here and we say we want to add a filter, we can say we want to filter by the username where the value is max the hedgehog. And I've done it a few times in the past, but here we can see the last few calls where the home button was clicked and we called max the hedgehog. So when you're doing this, this allows you to be able to filter easily between events to find exactly what you're looking for. All right, well, I hope you were able to learn something new about how to set up analytics in React, and I will see you in the next video.